Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakak, Gwadash. Yahweh is the true holy name of the Heavenly Father, who this world ignorantly calls God. Bahashem is in the name Yahweh Shah, that's the true name of, of the Most High's only begotten Son. Who the world ignorantly called Jesus, the Rakak Wadash, is the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew tongue. And also want to give double honors unto my apostles and elders of great millstone and peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, the 144,000 men that are laboring, toiling in his work for the sake of Yahweh Bashim al Shai. And also want to say Shalom to the innumerable multitude which consists of the men, women, and children that's believing and that's serving the Lord. To the best of their ability, I want to say Shalom Mom, and I'm the brother Gabar from the GMS Salt, GMS West Palm Camp, and I'm coming back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Al Shai, and Lord willing, the elect of the nation of Israel is edified. And Lord willing, tonight's lesson will be called We Must Endure Unto the End to Be Saved. Again, we must endure unto the end to be saved. So this this truth that we have, all right, we have to keep continuing to hold fast unto this truth, to keep laboring, to keep believing until Yahweh Shai comes and deliver us. But crowd, proud Christians, you know, they throw around the saying that I'm saved. Saved from what? Destruction is still coming. Famine, pestilence, all these different plagues are coming to the earth. We're still here in captivity. So what are you saved from? That's a question that these Christians have to ask themselves. What are you saved from? And the scriptures also say, dare not to make, dare not to make ourselves a part of that number. And that's why we say to the hopeful elect, because we're hoping to be a part of the elect. Nobody knows if they're saved. And that's why the scripture says we got to make our calling and election sure. Right. And before I dive into these precepts, I want to get this word endure here on the blue letter. Strong's G 5278. Upamano. Hupamano. All right, and it says to remain. I'm going to jump down. It says to preserve under misfortunes and trials to hold fast to one's faith and Amashiach, to endure, bear bravely and calmly ill treatments. And the translations trans, translate strongs. It says endure patiently. Abide, suffer. So that's the true meaning of endure. All right, the whole fast, this faith that we have, patiently goes back to suffer. Patient goes back to suffer. We're suffering. That's why the Lord says, uh, let me get this real quick. This is Romans 8 and verse 17. And it reads, if and if children, then heirs, heirs of the most high and joint heirs with the Mashiach. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So if we keep continuing to suffer with the Yahweh Shai until the Lord comes come, comes and redeem us, we're going to be glorified with the Yahweh Shai. So we're not saved. We're not saved until we're beamed up on them chariots. And I'm going to read verse 18. It says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory of which shall be revealed in us. So this suffering that we're going through 
it's it's not going to be able, it's not going to you can't compare to what the Lord has in store for us. We're going to be joint heirs with the Yahweh Shai. The Lord going to change this vile body and fashion it unlike unto his glorious body. The Lord got a crown waiting for us. As long as we keep continuing to suffer, just like Yahweh Shai did, just like the great our great forefathers of old, they suffered. Job, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All the prophets of old, they suffered. And that's why in Syrac 2 and 1, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation. All right? Because the Christian church, they like to make it seem like when you serve the Lord, you know, you 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 going you gonna be uh, prospering. Everything gonna be all good. You know, that's that's not scriptural. Yeah, you going it's gonna be a balance. All right, the Lord not gonna put too much on you that you can't handle. You are gonna have good moments and you are gonna have bad moments. But you are gonna suffer in His truth. And that's two thirds of our people. They don't want to suffer. They want to live it up. They want to live their best life. They want to have all the fame and fortune and carnal riches on this side. But before honor comes humility. So we got to walk that straight gate. Straight goes back. To a level of difficulty. In this truth, you gon' you gon you gon you gonna go through temptations. You gonna catch hell in this flesh. But we rather catch hell right now than to catch hell in a time of trouble. So these sufferings that we going through now is making us stronger. It's giving us faith. Faith in Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. Faith to get and, and, and these are going to be um, things that we can look back on when 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 shit hit the fan, and th these things can boost up our faith. All right. Let me go to Matthew twenty-four and verse thirteen, and it reads, "But he." That shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So we got to endure unto the end. It's not over yet. We're we're not in the kingdom. We're 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 in the home stretch. But we gotta we gotta finish the race. This is this is a promise from the Lord. The Lord says he's not slack concerning his promise. These words are faithful and true. Right? That's why the scripture says the things that was written aforetime, it was written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So these scriptures is here to to to, to to give us wisdom. This, this is the blueprint of how to be saved. Applying these scriptures. Not just being a hearer of the word, but a doer also. Proverbs 24 and 10. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. So we're going through different adversities now so these adversities that we're going through now you know is building us up for 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 the ultimate hour of temptation so we gotta we gotta defeat these battles that that we going through uh here here in these times this is practice the scriptures talk about rehearsing the righteous acts and that's why it's important 
to start seeking the Lord now. Getting yourself built up in the spirit. Because this is not uh, an off and on switch. In the time of trouble, you can't just turn the, 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 the light switch on. It don't work like that in anything in life. For instance, as sports, if, if you're born right-handed and you do everything right-handed, all right, you, in basketball, you got to practice uh, dribbling with your left, dribbling with your weak hand. And that's something that you that you get better with over time. So right now what we what we're doing is 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 practice. We're we're practicing. Practicing for the game. You practice what you do. You go over plays. You know, you get ready for game day. All right, so the scriptures is giving us the download. So applying the scriptures now is 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 giving us strength. So when that ultimate hour of temptation come, where we we can pass it. But two thirds of the nation of Israel, they're not gonna pass the test because they're not studying. They're not applying the scriptures. I'm gonna go to the book of Revelation, Revelation three and ten. And it reads, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the face of the earth. So our faith is going to be tried. Because when there's no food in these stores, all right? We might have to go a day or, or, or two without eating. But are you going to hold fast into this word? Are you going to keep continuing to trust in the Lord? Because it's easy, you know, to, to quote scriptures. But when adversity hit, are you going to remain true? Are you going to meditate on the scriptures of old? Like it says in Sirach 2 and 10, look at the generation of old and see did, I, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded. I'm going to read Revelations 3 and 10 in the NIV version. It says, since you have kept my command to endure patiently. So this is a commandment from Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. To endure patiently. Right? It says, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is, come, that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants on the earth. So the men that 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 endure that endure patiently, you keep your how about Shemal Shai commandments and precepts. The Lord says, I'm gonna keep you from the hour of temptation. That's gonna come upon the whole world. Revelations 3 and 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast that that no man take thy crown so so what do we have the most precious gift that's on the face of the earth this wisdom knowledge and understanding you should have a mindset i'm not gonna give this truth for, for nothing even if i gotta die for it This truth, it doesn't have a price. It, has, it doesn't have a price on this truth. It's more precious than rubies and gold, like it says in Proverbs. It's more precious than anything that man can desire. Because everything else in this world, it, 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 it has a price on it. 
But you can't put a price on this truth. Everything on, on this earth, it depreciates in value. But this truth is going to do the opposite. This truth is going to increase more and more, especially coming into the time of Jacob's trouble. All right. So let's go to book of Isaiah real quick to back up that statement. Isaiah 33 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. So this wisdom, knowledge, understanding of this Bible. That's, a, that's what's going to keep us stable in a time of trouble. So why sell it? Why choose temporary riches? Because it didn't say gold is going to keep you stable. It didn't say money will keep you stable. It didn't say a car will keep you stable. But this truth, this wisdom, knowledge, understanding... So that's why we got to hold fast unto this truth. Because the men that hold fast unto this truth, the Lord says he's going to make those men more precious than fine gold. So we're going to be worth, Lord willing, I don't want to write this out. The Lord, uh, um, well, we're part of that number. The Lord says we're going to be more precious than fine gold. Seven women shall cleave unto one man. I'm going to go to Revelation chapter 2 and verse 25. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. So there's wisdom, not to understanding. There's truth. All right. Sophia. Verse 26. And he that overcometh. And keepeth my works unto the end. You see, there go that saying again, unto the end, right? It says, to him will I give power over the nations. So the Lord, he going he, he gonna to change this, this, this vile body, fashion him like unto his glorious body. And the Lord, he going to give us power to rule over these nations. The same nations that has us in captivity, the, the same uh, nations that have us in, in, in captivity today. We're going to be ruling over them. We're going to be ruling over the Rothschilds, the, the DuPonts, the Bilderbergs, all these so-called uh, elites. We're going to have them in chains. We're going to rule over them. Verse 27, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as I received of my father. So we're going to beat the shit out of these nations. Dashing the they, they, they little ones into the stones. We're going to be joint heirs with the Hawashai. This is what's coming for the elect as long as we endure to the end. These are promises that the Lord promised us. You know, the scriptures talk about keeping your eyes single, right? This is our this is this is our focus. This is, this is our goal. We're trying to be saved. We're fighting for the kingdom. We're fighting for Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh I'll close out with one last precept. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith. And this truth, this thing that we have of ours, it's all about faith. Because what we're talking about is things that we cannot see. The kingdom of heaven is not, is not tangible. It's not something that we can see. But that's faith. The Yahweh Shai. We don't see the Lord. We don't see Yahweh. We don't see the angels. We don't see the chariots. Well, we do. 
You know, brothers see chariots all the time. But this thing of ours is of faith. And that's something that 66.6 .6 of our people, they don't have. The Lord has deprived them from faith. And faith, that's the beginning of, of, of pleasing you, the Lord. Without faith, you cannot please Yahweh Ba Shema It says that in Hebrews 11 and 6. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. So we're fighting for immortality. The scripture says, some of us, there's, there's going to be some of us that shall not taste of death. Certain men that's walking this earth that we see teaching this, this truth and truth and sincerity. There's going to be certain men on, on this earth that shall not die. Yahweh Shai can't die. And we're going to be joint heirs with him. It says, whereunto thou art also called. We've been called into this ministry. Scripture says, many are called, but few are chosen. It says, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. And I want to look up this word here, professions, for edification's sake. It says a paid occupation, especially one that involves prolonged training and formal qualifications. And some synonyms are career, uh, business, job. So this is our job. This is our duty. This is our number one priority on this earth. Not our nine to five that, 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 that we clock in at Esau job. That's not our that's not our first that's not our first priority. Our family is not our first first priority. Yo, your woman is not your first priority. Your car is not your first priority. Your you yourself is not the first priority. This is all about you. How about Shemal Shah doing his will? So this is our career. You know, just like you go to your job and you, and you work hard for Esau. You work your eight, eight, ten hours, however long you work and you do a good job for Esau. We have to apply that same method to to Yahweh Bashim al Shai. But more, we got to go harder for Yahweh Bashim al Shai than we do for Esau Edom. Because, because Esau, he giving you temporary riches. Riches that's going to corrupt. But this, this money that, that, that we're going to receive is going, is going to be, hey, that, that, that's the true blessing. And like our brother Adam Wan and our camp always say, faith is going to be the new currency in a time of trouble. All right. And that's why we're laboring now. So we can reap the benefits in a time of trouble. The Lord said he's not unrighteous to forget our work and labor of love. I'm going to actually close out with that. Gone. This is Hebrews 6 and 10. For the for the most high, Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. So that's the point. Yahweh Bashim Al Shai is not gonna is not gonna forget our, our work that we've been doing. Starting with our apostles, laboring in this truth for 30 plus years. Consistently going out to the highways and byways in season and out of season. Making these lessons, being brotherly, being a good example for the for the nation of Israel, showing us how how to walk in this truth. 
So everything that we doing, the Lord sees it. And he's not going to forget it. The Lord ain't, ain't, ain't no Edomite. The Edomite will say one thing and will do the complete opposite. Just like he did to the native Indians. Broke every treaty. But Yahweh Bashim al Shah, he's not a man that he shall not lie. So I'm going to close out with that. Lord willing, the elect of the nation of Israel was edified. And I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakak, Wadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, the 144,000 men that are laboring, toiling in his work for the sake of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. And also want to say Shalom. To the innumerable multitude which consists of the men, women, and children that's believing and that's serving the Lord to the best of their ability. I want to say Shalom at the water. Yahweh Ba Shem Shai for giving me the spirit to make this lesson. Lord willing to the next lesson, I'm gonna say Shalom and a Baba Ba. Shalom. DTA.